Hi, it's Brian too in uh, La Jolla, San Diego, Northern San Diego. Um, on the trolley line uh, at Old Town the other day, um, passed a couple of three member I've met to. And uh, the, with a gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous firewall, really cute firewall. Uh, she wasn't as, as pretty as uh, the uh, one they used on Hong Kong. They had a really gorgeous firewall. Uh, it was also just three members. Generally, these high flying teams are no are no more three, than three to six members because it uh, they communicate uh, via their brainwaves, electronic brain to brain interface, synthetic telepathy, etc. And uh, it becomes the conversational patterns become too schizophrenic and too many people are thinking out loud. So these these high flying teams these these, these uh, these teams of cognitive researchers, psychiatrists, psychologists, neuroscientists, behavioral scientists, etc., etc., they are uh, generally uh, just around three members, three to six members. Uh, and the cognitive researcher responsible is uh, generally like neuroscientists, psychiatrists, psychologists, behavioral scientists, but so too is the firewall, like the one they use, I mean, in Costa Rica. Um, uh, the firewall is also a cognitive researcher. Now, the third member of the hive mind team, if you run into a three member hive mind team, uh, is not a cognitive researcher. He's there for security. He's, uh, he's basically what, what, what they call a surveillance wall, protection, counter surveillance, etc. Uh, but that's what, that's what happened. That, that, that's what happened. Uh, this is a hub. San Diego is a hub for, 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 this, for this technology. Really, is the worst place to be. Uh, San Diego uh, University, University of California, San Diego Department of Neural Circuitry, I believe it's called something. Uh, that whole area around the medical school. That whole area around the medical school. That's big. They're big into this technology, and they're using uh, innocent men, women, and unfortunately, little children, uh, torturing raping, murdering even little children for the training, research, and development behind this technology. They're using trauma, physical and psychological trauma, to map out and reverse engineer the sensory and neural pathways of the victim's brain and central nervous system. Uh, and it gets really bad. They call it uh, three, basically three things they're doing. Censorship, such as cognitive containment, uh, preventing any external inter interference, such as the dampening of the neural link, Anything which dampens or disrupts that neural link, that's got to be stopped. It's called censorship. And uh, secondly, they're they're using uh, uh, memory management. And it's just I did a video on this. It's on my uh, uh, Instagram account. I think it's also on my Rumble account. And Brighteon may also be on my BitChute account. But certainly on Brighteon and Rumble. Uh, memory management is the second thing they're doing. It's too complicated and advanced a topic to explain in this short video. But essentially it's one thing. Memory management is blocking real memories, thoughts, emotions, brainwaves, and injecting with fabricated or falsified memories, thoughts, emotions, brainwaves. That's called memory management. Um, essentially they copy the victim's brainwaves, build a cognitive model, and then they just keep injecting those same brainwaves over and over in a loop of pattern, a perpetual loop of pattern. And then the third thing they're doing, remember censorship, memory management, is direct behavior and control. And that's, that's what they're trying to achieve through deception and manipulation with this technology is direct behavior and control over the victim. That basically occurs where the victim can no longer read active memory. And reading active memory is essentially one thing. I'm, I'm making this real simple. And I only know because of what the scientists, what I got from the scientists, um, that were involved in the technology, the CIA knows who I got it from, um, and they're not too happy about that. But essentially, uh, direct behavioral control happens where the victim can no longer read active memory. And reading active memory is basically one thing, it's testing and validating memory. Testing and validating memory of thought. Big difference between those two, but I just don't have time to go into it. It's, uh, it's 2.19 in the afternoon. Um, uh, and 
just a really cute firewall this time. Really cute firewall. Uh, it's 2.20 in the afternoon, uh, July 9, 2022. So going to the